Oh, wait, let me make sure it's recording. It's recording, it's recording. So how weird is the Manti Teo documentary? So weird. So the documentary on the uh, Untold series, this Netflix series, where it's different sports stories and they're kind of talking about some stuff that people remember, but they're giving a more of a whole cloth um, review and, and, and um, documentary style uh, videos of what's kind of going on. And I love stuff like this. Like the first one, The Malice in the Palace, about Ron Artest and a couple of team members going into stands and just punching out some people in the audience. That was great. That was a great documentary. It was so engaging. And that was a weird time because I remember when it happened and it was so unreal and so bizarre that you're just like, this can't be the, this can't be the NBA. This can't be real life. Um, the Manti Teo documentary is just wild. It is wild. And the fact that, the fact that it's one of those things where you're just like, I can't believe there was a circumstance of catfishing to such a degree that impacted somebody's entire life, their perspective, their personality, the, their mental state just after or just before Neve's movie Catfish really, really came out. I think it was just after because a few people had heard of the term, I think he mentioned in the documentary. So around 2012, I think the movie came out maybe 2010 or 2011. I remember seeing it in theaters. That was a lot of fun. Um, one of my early dates. And just being so like, what? People are building their whole lives on this type of stuff. And just kind of seeing how it affected somebody to such a degree and how they went so far, it was crazy. Um, crazy things that happened in the documentary, I'm going to talk about a couple of them. So if you don't want to get spoiled, stop right here. Go watch it, come back, and we'll just kind of keep it going from there. Um, the fact that, <laughs> I think his name was Renea, uh, Reneo, Renea, he could turn his voice to sound that feminine. So we're watching it and I'm like, it sounds like a woman, legitimately sounds like a woman, the cadence and everything like that. Not like somebody disguising their voice. Now I know that Reneo was a, is, a, is a singer. So maybe it's something in that, being able to control the vocal tonality to such a degree, but it was insane because when you heard the recordings, when they played the recordings, I was like, that sounds like a woman. I would be personally, I would be fooled. I would definitely be fooled. Then I start to feel empathy towards this guy and the stories that came out when he, you know, everybody going off on him and just being like, he made it up and stuff like that. I remember thinking that this was a football player and I wasn't following. I don't really follow college football like that. But I remember hearing the story as college football player made up a girlfriend and faked her death for like clout or for views. Uh, good thing he didn't win the Heisman, like all this stuff. And I was like, what a jerk. Now that I know the story, I was like, oh, he got tricked. He got tricked by this woman um, who is pretending to be somebody else because uh, they are dealing with a lot of pressure in their life, pretending like they're someone else, and this is the only place in the world that they could feel like themselves. Now, I'm all for that if you're writing fan fiction and you're just putting yourself in the story of whatever and you're Bella from Twilight or whatever, but... When it starts to affect people's lives, when you pretend to be dead, putting the phone and just like breathing, <sighs> and he's like getting told all this lies. And Manti Teo is the most sincere, earnest, doing everything in his power to do the right thing, to live up to his legacy, to follow uh, the Christian, his Christian beliefs. It's just frustrating that even somebody so good 
could be used to such a degree. And I think that's kind of the lesson is that goodness without discernment is nothing but naivete. And you can't go through the world being naive because you put yourself and your family in the vulnerable situations. So you can believe in others, but you don't have to trust that everybody is like you or as earnest as you are. It's, whew, that was a wild one to watch. And it got more interesting as it went on, but I think about how blessed he was in his collegiate football career. That despite all this craziness, he can reminisce about some of the greatest football ever to be played in the history of football. The amount of sacks he had, the amount of tackles, the amount of just intensity and physicality. And he was able to make it all the way to the NFL, which is the pinnacle of the American physical attributes that we admire. It's really cool. So really big shout out to him. Everyone needs to leave him alone. Mentai Teo is a very uh, cautious, it's a cautionary tale about being taken advantage of when you think you're doing the right thing and other people will just take advantage of you. And that's really what that woman, Renoa, Renea, Renoa, <laughs> what, what she, what she did, she was taking advantage of him because of how good he was, because she knew some things about him, because she felt desperate and she liked the attention. She liked the attention of somebody liking her for who she sees herself as, as opposed to who they see herself as. That's real, but you cannot mess with others in that way. Crazy documentary. You need to watch it if you haven't. And if you listen to this whole thing, spoilers and all, and you hadn't watched it, shame on you. Go watch the documentary Untold on Netflix. I really recommend it.